Welcome to the Gatehouse Gallery at the Museum of Lincolnshire Life. We're here to talk about the Our Patch of Earth project and how we're getting on. We've been developing our plans for the secret Victorian garden out there and our plants have been growing fantastically. Up here in the gallery, we've launched our new project, having an exhibition with Esteban, our artist in residence. Hello, my name is Esteban Peña Parga. I am an artist I am, and I was the artist in residency for our Patch of Earth residency at the Museum of Lincolnshire Life, in which uh, the Gatehouse Gallery was adapted to become a contemporary art gallery. Behind me, you can see one of the series of artworks called Fluorescent Wildflowers. Uh, the ones you can see here, it's a, it's a daisy. Uh, under ultraviolet light, visible light and infrared light. This part of the project is about investigating invisible light. So I was taking the colors beyond the rainbow and compressing them as if they were an accordion and making the infrared and ultraviolet light visible. These flowers, these wild flowers, very common in England, uh, could be seen under these special conditions in a very special way. I found out that insects can communicate with the flowers in ultraviolet light, so the insects see the flowers in special ways, maybe as you're see seeing them right here. The artwork that you're seeing right here is a dandelion under special lights. Uh, what I do to do these paintings is I take a photograph of the dandelion in visible light, normal light, ultraviolet light and infrared light. I combine them on the computer and then with that image I make this painting. The painting is only made with four basic colors. Cyan, a special kind of blue, magenta, a special kind of red, black and yellow. And the rest of the colors that you see here are mixed actually on the, on the work and not on the palette. If you get close by, you can see how the painting is made with little blobs of color. And if you get far away, you can see the dandelion it's in all its beauty beyond the rainbow. The series that you're looking at here is called Endangered Wildflower Silhouettes. And they were inspired in Victorian silhouettes. The portrait before photography was very popular in which people used to pose sideways with a very strong light and copy their silhouettes to capture their image. In this occasion, I chose from the list of endangered British wildflowers, a list of uh, flowers that are, were actually in the verge of extinction. Many of these uh, flowers uh, are uh, being in danger for many reasons. One of them is the use of land, uh, the use of pesticides, herbicides and fungicides and the way we use the land for roads and living purposes. So what I did, instead of showing the whole beauty of these flowers, I decided to go in a different route and just paint their silhouettes in this extra black paint that absorbs 98% of the light, uh, generating this kind of void. So the poetic uh, combination is the silhouettes, only the outline of the figures, and the extra black void showing poetically the void in which we probably are going to be uh, facing with these flowers in a couple of years. This one in particular is the silhouette of a uh, good King Henry. It's a herb very popular in Lincolnshire because it was called the poor man's spinach or Lincolnshire asparagus. And it was actually used in the same way we use uh, uh, spinach asparagus today and we ate it down here in Lincolnshire. This one is a lady slipper orchid, very popular in Victorian times because this orchid was very common in the lands where uh, calcium uh, was very rich. Uh, and it, the roots were used to treat, in Victorian times, depression and mental illness. Nowadays, the orchids only live in very undisturbed lands. That means that it's uh, very uncommon to see them. And that's why they are uh, in danger. They also uh, have a very particular relationship with a fungi, in which the fungi feeds the orchid through the roots and the orchids feed the fungi also through the roots. And this fungi uh, lives in very, very 
undisturbed land. Within the project, I had the chance to collaborate with the Sir Joseph Bank Society, and in one of the chats that uh, we had with them, an anecdote came up that was very interesting to me. Sir Joseph Bank's mother used to have a book next to her bed table called Gerald's Herbal, and it was a very popular book that gathered the knowledge of plants and herbs in England. And uh, what she did in particular was she pinned holes through the actual pages, the illustrations of Gerald Herbal book to base her embroidery. So she took the pages and pinned the holes through the edges of these plants to actually base her embroidery on. I did take that anecdote and translate it into these artworks that are light traces, like light drawings. And what I did is I also copied the illustrations of the book, but in this case, I only put the holes and I put a light at the back to show uh, the lights coming through these uh, holes in the page. So in addition to Esteban's wonderful artwork, which has got so much really, really positive feedback, Esteban also looked through the collections and here you can see um, a large Victorian decoration. It's a flower, it looks like flowers from a distance, but it's actually made from shells. And in Victorian times, um, this idea of putting um, a display like this within a glass dome was very, very popular. And it actually usually lives in our parlour down in the museum. He also looked behind the scenes in the archives and our collections and found some of our artefacts that are linked to the whole project of our patch of earth, whether it's linked to gardening or flowers. And you can see these beautiful 18th century gardeners here, um, as well as some of our 19th century um, flowery pottery that we've got from the Usher Gallery. So over to the next case, and we worked closely with a local florist to get this brilliant display of um, dried flowers. Um, it's very difficult to have any fresh flowers in any exhibitions in a museum, so it was amazing to work with Buds and Blooms to create this lovely display. We also looked in the stores here at the museum and found a whole load of interesting gardening items and beautiful flower um, artefacts. We've got um, powder cases and cufflinks uh, and these great Victorian um, gardening tools. I'm very tempted to use them in the garden. I know they won't let me. Um, behind us as well, we worked very closely, as Esteban mentioned, with Sir Joseph Bank Society, who kindly lent us some of their handling collection. They have a herbarium there that they're collecting and gathering Lincolnshire plants um, to store and to protect. They also work with the Love Lynx um, plants project as well. So it's been really informative to work with them on this project. So thank you to Esteban for such a wonderful start to the Our Patch of Earth project. The next few months we'll see us planning behind the scenes the hidden secret garden, looking at how we develop that as we go through um, into the next months and years as, as this sustainable project continues at the Museum of Lincolnshire Life. I was very lucky to be able to participate in our Patch of Earth Art Residency. It was very nice working with Anita, with the team at the museum uh, and all the sites and the collaborations we made and it was lovely to bring out the wildflowers uh, within Lincoln. Mm -hmm.